God is good. And all the time. Waitaka passed away through a road accident. By the version of that road accident, a that of our departed governor brother was the same. The guardrail is meant to guard. It is meant to protect lives. I think something has gone wrong somewhere because it has now become a weapon. Because we have members of parliament seated with us here. You need to take up that matter. What is wrong with our guardrails? There is a problem. Is it the quality of work workmanship? Is it the quality of the guardrails? Why have they become swords? Why have they become a killer? And I think it is not a matter of jokes any longer. Because that's a new version of road accidents. Kwingine kwa jamii zinazoishi katika kaunti ya Samburu zimeombwa ku zimeombwa zisiwafiche watoto wao walio na ulemavu majumbani ili waweze kusaidika Regina Lengojine mkazi wa Samburu anasema kuwa uh, watoto wengi wanaoishi na ulemavu katika kaunti hiyo wanafichwa nyumbani na wazazi wao wanaogopa unyanyapaa katika jamii akizungumza wakati wa shughuli za kuchangisha pesa katika mji wa Maralal hapo jana waziri wa utamaduni jinsia na michezo katika kaunti kaunti hiyo uh, Benedict Lentumunai amesema kuwa serikali ya kaunti hiyo imetenga shilingi milioni tano zitakazotumika katika ununuzi wa vyakula vya msaada kwa watoto wale mavu katika kaunti hiyo <tipos> Uh, institution. Those who are on wheelchairs but they are intelligent, they go up to university, they're totally blind. We have so many of them who have gone up to university, who are in colleges at, at this moment and they require support. We have uh, two institutions in our county which take care of children who are living with disability and um, this one is unique because it takes care of children even who have um, um, you know, different other challenges and we will try to help them to to do to refurbish like their beds mattresses we want them to have a small uh, farm where they can also grow their own food so that they are, they, they can sustain themselves but also most importantly through the uh, national government constituency development fund we have committed that the most vulnerable will get special bursary Tuelekee pwani sasa baadhi ya wakazi wa eneo la Mwamdai katika kaunti ya Mombasa wametaka msaada wa kuhamishwa nini baada ya nyumba zao kuonyesha nyufa wakazi hao pia wamelalamika baada ya daraja walilokuwa kitumia kusombwa na mafuriko gavana wa kaunti hiyo Ali Hassan Joho alifika katika eneo hilo uh, ambapo alitathmini hasara wanayopata wakazi lakini hadi sasa wenyeji wanasema hatua haijachukuliwa <laughs> Kwa hakika kabisa leo tuko hapa kwa sababu tuko na huzuni nyingi kwa sababu ya kijiji chetu cha Mwamlai vile kilivyo tumekuwa na hii shida kwa muda mrefu zaidi ya miaka 20 sasa kuhusiana hili bonde ambalo kwa kweli kabisa kufikia sasa baada ya mvua kuzidi tunaona kwamba kijiji kimegawanywa mara mbili kiasi cha kwamba ni vigumu kabisa mtoto kutoka chini kupanda juu ama mama mzee kutoka chini kupanda juu vile vile kuna hatari ambayo inaonekana wazi katika sehemu hii kwa sababu tayari tumeona baadhi ya manyumba yameanza kuonyesha ishara za kuporomoka miti imeporomoka hii ina maana kwamba kwa muda mfupi unaokuja kama kutakuwa na mvua leo ama kesho basi tunatarajia janga kubwa sana kwa hii hiki kijiji tunawauliza viongozi na serikali kuu kwamba wakati umefika ambapo wananchi wako na shida hasa katika mwezi mtukufu lakini lazima asubuhi tufike hapa tuvushe watoto kwenda mashule na baadaye tuje hapa tena tuchukue watoto kurudisha manyumbani jambo ambalo limekuwa jambo la hatari hakuna raha na kama ni viongozi nafikiri washao na kila kitu wa viongozi wa kila aina washafika hapa mheshimiwa governor alikuwa hapa Eh, na MCA watu wa kila wanashafika hapa kwa lakini mpaka sasa bado hatujapata utatuzi wote. Kwa hivyo tunaomba ikiwa serikali itaingilia jambo kama hili, serikali kuu pamoja na viongozi wengine ama wahisani waje waangalie shughuli kama hii watusaidie. Maana ikiwa mvua itaendelea kunyesha nafikiri sisi hapa tutaangamia. 
Mwenda kumoja na kupeleka hadi katika eneo ambapo bodi ya halmashauri ya udhibiti wa idara ya polisi ya ipoa. Uh, uh, kuna ile hafla inayoendelea uh, ya bodi hiyo kupokeza ripoti ya utendakazi katika hatamu yake. Uh, Ilioanza mwaka 2012 likumbuka kuwa uh, mda wa maafisa wa simamizi wa aipo umekamilika. Ila kumikuwa na maswali ambayo meibuka kusu kuchilewa kwa maafisa wapia kuwajiriwa. Hebu tusikizi. Restrictions against the police officers on human rights abuses we must also acknowledge. It's a first in Kenya. It had never happened before. This was the first time that it was happening. As has been indicated by my colleague, this was achieved effectively within a period of three and a half years, because for the first two and a half years, we were setting up the institution. Now, I must say we would not have been able to achieve this if I did not have a very united board. We had a board that was united in purpose, that was only focused on doing the work, and were only guided by evidence, facts, and the larger public interest. We also would not have been able to achieve this if we didn't have parliament with us. Chair of the parliamentary uh, committee that we report to, we are indeed very grateful, because even when our independence was threatened, uh, twice actually, it is parliament that stood up and ensured that the law that is there to protect our independence remained in place. In terms of funding, I must say that uh, the parliamentary committee again has ensured that we've been sufficiently funded. We are one organization that cannot complain about lack of funding. Again, courtesy of the parliamentary uh, committee that has been able to ensure that we are funded correctly. We have had treasury with us in terms of understanding our needs. We thank most sincerely the Office of the Director of Public Prosecution. They've worked very well with us. Your predecessor, and even as uh, the new DPP came in place, he understood our challenges and our needs, and we've worked very well. We pray that that uh, relationship continues. The civil society has been with us. Peter Kiama, you and your colleagues, uh, Irungo Houghton, all of you, we really thank you. Because were it not also for the support we've received from uh, the civil society, we would not have been able to move forward. And we thank you uh, most sincerely. The media, the media from the start, when you engage them, they understood our mandate, they understood our challenges, they've worked with us and we've worked extremely well. I want to thank you, Tom Mishind, I want to thank you, David McCarley, I want to thank all of you uh, for the uh, very good uh, partnership that we've had together. The National Police Service, of course, they are our biggest stakeholder. We've had our challenges. We've engaged a lot with the Inspector General. Many times we've not been able to agree, but at least we've engaged and there has been progress. Uh, and there's no way the National Police Service is going. They, saw where, they know where the Independent Policing Oversight Authority is going, National Police Service Commission. All of us must agree to engage because we are all serving the same uh, country. I must also thank most sincerely also, very, very, very much, the religious uh, leaders that you've had. Archbishop Olesa Pitt, at one time I surrendered my, my, my seat for him to be able to sit, chair our board, and pray for us. That we really thank you most sincerely. Kadi, Isaac, you recall that uh, when we were inaugurated, we called you to come and pray for us, together with the Canon Mashira. We said we will not start our work without praying first. And that has really helped us a great deal. And we even called you to say, Isaac, be here again, pray again. And even as we end, as Bishop Alfred Rotich will be ending uh, with prayers, also we ask Canon Mashira to be here so that you can also pray for us uh, as we leave office. So we really thank you most sincerely uh, for that uh, uh, collaboration. Of course, the Ministry of Interior and National Coordination, because that is the parent ministry that has the policy oversight over all the institutions in policing agencies. We must really thank you most sincerely, because whenever there are challenges, uh, you're always able to come in uh, and, and assist us. There are many times that the friction, we must admit, as the IG has said, was really at you know, pitch high. And even uh, your predecessor, uh, Honorable uh, Kaiseri, at one time had to intervene when uh, one of our investigators was uh, assaulted by a police officer, and then Kayseri took action at that moment. So we really thank the ministry because it has consistently been able to stand by us. We would not have been able to achieve all that, and we thank you. Finally, of course, we thank uh, to one, the public. The public has stood by us, even at times when we've been low, and again, our families. Our families are the ones who understand most the challenges that we have had to go through, sometimes when it has really been demoralizing for us, but they stood with us. I, my wife is here, and uh, she represents all the other wives and uh, the, you know, everybody else. So we really thank them, because at times 
At times we were wondering whether it was worth being, you know, doing these jobs, but we said, in the interest of the country, we must serve because that is extremely critical and we have to be patriots. Finally, let me say this. I'll say three things. We've analyzed the complaints that we've received in the last uh, six years. No? Of course, as I said, mainly we worked for three and a half years. And the following trends and patterns have emerged that 45.1% of those complaints related to abuse of office by members of the National Police Service. Now, 18.1% related to police harassment. 3.3% uh, 3 .3 related to killings by police officers. 3.8% related to serious injuries caused by police officers. Then there was 7.6% related to uh, matters of police welfare. And then there was 0.4% that related to sexual offenses. And then there was 6.5% uh, uh, that related to assault. And uh, the rest, which was 13.8%, 18, related to general misconduct. So our conclusion has been this, as we leave, that the biggest problem within the National Police Service, if we are to be candid, is the management. It's a management issue that needs to be dealt with. That's our take home. Management is a critical issue. Now, what do I mean by management? One, majority of police commanders do not have management and leadership skills, and that impacts negatively on the running of the National Police Service. That is one. Point number two, there is no coherent strategic direction. Coherent in the sense that you can say that the police service there is effective coordination. There is no effective uh, coordination that is, uh, you know, that, that, that is there. And of course, that coherent uh, strategic uh, direction, which affects, again, as you've said, uh, the running of the National Police Service. Now, again, there is no elaborate accountability mechanism. Because if there was elaborate uh, accountability me mechanism, it would be much easier to hold police officers to account rather than for us being in denial. Because if we continue being in denial that this is a problem, then it becomes extremely difficult to come up with solutions. Solutions can only be there if we start by accepting that it's a problem. So if these issues are tackled, it will become easier for the National Police Service to change itself because the change should actually start from within, not even from without. We are just but an external accountability mechanism. But it behoves on the police itself to change itself. Now, and if they're able to change that, it then means that the public confidence will increase and with that, communities will properly engage with the police and you'll see better relations, without doubt, and we'll have a national police service that you can be proud of. Secondly, for us, we've been pleasantly surprised by the incoming of uh, the current cabinet secretary. Because you must say, and I have been involved in national policing uh, reforms for the last 10 years. In fact, we served with the Bishop Alfred Rotich in the task force on national police uh, reforms uh, for quite some time. But this is the first time, and I'm not watching brief for Honorable Matiang, this is the first time as we are exiting, we have a cabinet secretary who actually understands what we need to do in terms of changing the national policing. And this I can tell you from somebody as somebody who is from the wing inside. He needs the cooperation of the civil society, he needs the cooperation of the National Police Service and the other agencies, because it's extremely important that we change the National Police Service for the betterment of our country. Finally, it's our sincere hope, uh, Honorable Chair of the Parliamentary Committee, it's our sincere hope, uh, Honorable CS, that from tomorrow, you have 14 days to ensure that you have a panel that will recruit our successors. It is important that we have that team empaneled, and the executive and the parliament ensures that we have men and women of quality and substance to be able to take over our work and proceed from where we've left. We've served our time, we've done our bit, we have a report that is comprehensive enough that has everything that we've done, it will be very easy for the new board to take over from there. We are proud and we thank the country for having given us an opportunity to serve. Thank you very much. God bless you. 
and may our country continue prospering. Now, may I invite uh, Honorable Ntutu not to speak, to invite the CS in the interest of time, uh, so that we can be able to, to accept the report and we proceed from there. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I've been told not to talk. <laughs> and I know you have been sitting here the whole morning. It is my honor to welcome Dr. Matiangi, the CS4 Interior. Thank you. Um, we have uh, spent this morning quite well. We have greeted each other. We have prayed. We know the least of all of us who are here. Please allow me to start this the spiritual way. Uh, my brethren, thank you for coming this morning. <laughs> uh, we have a wonderful day uh, ahead of us. We spend a good part of this morning listening to our brothers and sisters from Ipoa who have done a fantastic job. And I will save all of us the time by going straight to the business uh, of this day. First of all, uh, His Excellency President Kenyatta asked me to convey his personal sincere gratitude to IPOA and for the wonderful work that you have done. Uh, and it is the President's wish and all of our wish that we move forward and we move on to do what we must do to strengthen our policing environment. I very sincerely want to thank each one of you uh, who is involved in this. I have been at the Ministry of Interior for a few months, but I've enjoyed working with all the stakeholders in the room. And as we go forward, listening to each one of those who have spoken ahead of me this morning, you can see, ladies and gentlemen, that we are on to a good thing. Our country is moving on in the right direction. So I'll make three points. One, about where we've come from. I want to sincerely thank you, Masharia and the board of IPOA, for a job well done. As a citizen of this country and as a cabinet secretary for interior and coordination of national government, I am sincerely satisfied that you have served our country with dignity, with integrity, and you have set an excellent example in public service as we move forward. And I assure you, on my own behalf and on behalf of my colleagues at the ministry, that we have a new spirit in the country of moving in the right direction, and we will provide all the support that we are required to provide to IPOA and other agencies to be able to move forward. Change we must. We cannot continue living this way and hope that we will have the country that we desire to live. And change is a responsibility for all of us. It's not just for IPOA or for the National Police Service, but change is something that we all have to internalize and work on as we move forward. The second point I want to make is this. My brothers and sisters, you understand the challenges we face in this country. If there's anything I learned uh, when I went to the Minister of Interior, is that I did not know until I went there the challenges that you have to overcome to keep this country safe and secure. Quite frankly, if some of us in this room were given a half of Boinetti's job, you probably will leave on day one, uh, as it were. The police and the security sector in this country work hard. They genuinely work hard. And we have men and women in uniform who are committed and who have given us their all in terms of ensuring that our country remains safe and secure. Our responsibility, first and foremost, is to support them and appreciate them in the work that they do. That is not to say that we don't have challenges. We would be deluding ourselves if we thought that we didn't have challenges. We do. But challenges are easily overcome when we look at them and deal with them together as a group of people. And that is why, uh, now that Kawiria, I have learned you are careful about the things I say in public, I need to be even more careful. Uh, that's why I insist that we all have an equal responsibility to ensure that our country moves forward in the right direction. Yes, it's true, you may say, that we in government have the monopoly of violence. But we also have the monopoly of responsibility to our people. It is our responsibility to ensure that our country is safe and secure. It's our responsibility 
to ensure that the people of Kenya are able to move forward and do what they must do in their various lives as they move along. And it's not easy. It is, it's very difficult. But I want to say this. Much as we all love our police officers across the country, I am the first one to stand here and tell you candidly and sincerely, we've had tough conversations even with our colleagues. We've had tough conversations with Mr. Kavludi and the Inspector General. And this is the message we give to our police officers. We love them enough to ensure that they live and work according to the law. We, we love them hard enough to ensure that they do not engage in crime. When police officers are engaged in activities or things that hurt fellow citizens, we too get hurt. I have made this point several times before, that when an individual police officer uh, uh, assaults a member of the public, like the case happened the other day in Madeira during the by-election, we too are affected, and then we get hurt, and we raise these issues. We talk about them very openly. It is not right that students are killed uh, when they are protesting, like it happened in the case of uh, Mary University. It is not right that certain things happen. And where things have happened that we ourselves feel unhappy about, we investigate them, we work with IPOA, we cooperate effectively, we ensure that we deliver justice to the people of Kenya. Being in public office, and I need to say this very carefully to all of you, my brothers and sisters in the room in public office. Being in public office, and holding the jobs that we hold gives us no right to break the law or to go out of our way and abuse others' rights. But I want to urge you, friends, that now is the time we have together, civil society, um, various government agencies, independent offices, now is the time to cross ranks and work together. That's why the 17th of April, this year was very important to me because we held for the first time ever the National Policing Conference. When we all sat around the table, all of us actors looked each other in the face and said what we need to do to strengthen the uh, policing environment. And I want to commit to you here in public, all of you, our colleagues from civil society, from independent institutions, that we will remain open, consultative, inclusive, we will remain engaged to ensure that we improve our policing environment, that we address the concerns that have been raised, that we are a rule of law environment, that we ensure we respect human rights when we are engaged in our policing activities. But equally, I want to ask you that now is the time when we are away from an election and the silly season when we do all manner of things. Now is the time for us to also educate our people on how they can enjoy their rights without infringing on others' rights. It is everyone is right to picket, for example, to demonstrate you don't need my permission or anyone's permission, but it's not right to break into people's property. It is not right to hurt people merely because they hold different views from yours. It is not right to ban things that belong to those you do not like or you don't agree with politically. And you don't make it any easier for Inspector General Boynet when you engage in those kinds of things. So, so let's be balanced and objective as we go forward. Support our police, raise the questions that we must raise, but ensure also that we build the capacities of our people to live responsibly and to live well in society. It is not fair for blanket condemnations or blame on the police. When individual cases have to be investigated, I promise you, as a Minister of Interior, we will work with you, we will cooperate, we will do what we are required to do to ensure that the right thing is done as we go forward. Lastly, change we must, and I'm so grateful to the National Police Service, the Inspector General, for what they are doing. We are actually entering the second phase of fairly radical changes in the manner in which we police the country. Some of those are changes that will require all of us to support them. And I ask all of us to understand, and let us exercise a sense of decency. In some cases, we actually need to exercise common sense. We have to rationalize, for example, as I've said several times before, the way we deploy our police resources in the country. A country of our size, with the needs that we have, cannot afford to do some of the things we do, which are sheer madness. There is no county government official anywhere in this country who needs 26 police officers to guard them. 
There is no one. Governor or whatever, you don't need 26 police officers to guard you. We can't move a police station to your office. <laughs> so, 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 so when the Inspector General engages in this rationalization and the deployment of resources, the Inspector General is not a politician. We are not politicians. We are doing things that make sense, looking at the challenges we have that we must move forward with. And I can tell you, colleagues, we will remain on this trajectory. There are certain things that are necessary. There are mistakes that we have made in the past in the manner in which we have conducted ourselves. Now is the time to correct some of those mistakes and behave responsibly. I will be one of the protectors, very strong protectors, of the law that preserves the independence of IPOA. And I can assure you as government, we are not interested in cannibalizing the powers of IPOA. And I can assure you, Mr. Chairman, that the government will do its part so that we put up a plan in place to recruit a successor board, as we are required to do by the law, because we all are determined to live responsibly. And as we move forward, I'm interested in, in, in targets. We, we are in these jobs because we have to deliver services to our people. Our president has been firm on results, the results, things that people can touch. So in a short while, I'm going to meet with my colleagues, the Solicitor General, my friend, the uh, TPP, and the Inspector General of Police, because one of the things that happened is that we have submitted ourselves to the International Index on Effective Policing. I would like us to be rated by others so that people can see whether we are making progress or we are not making progress. I would like, rather than waiting for the two or three years to end, I would like us to have an annual meeting at which the Solicitor General, the DPP, the Chairperson of the National Police Service, the Inspector General, we look at each other and respond to the statistics that Mashere was talking about. If 700 cases have been given to us as the National Police Service, where are we with the disposal of the cases? Because that is the accountability I would like to give as a minister. So, Mr. Kavludi, we also have to look at these good people and tell them the truth. Where are we with the cases? We must present that kind of report as we go forward. Because if issues have come before us, we have to investigate those issues. I agree with the Solicitor General. Now is the time to insist on accountability so that we serve our people. We are in this position so that we can deliver services to our people. Lastly, I want to assure you, my brothers and sisters, we may have challenges and we may have weaknesses. We've come a long way. We are fantastic people in the leadership of the National Police Service. I've been here for a short while, worked with Mr. Boynet, I've worked with Mr. Kavlud and his board. What I see in them is a very strong willingness to bring about the change that we desire. We'll have change even in the recruitment of the next police officers we are going to recruit. I want to step up the capacities of the police service so that for a country that is endowed as ours is, we should increase the capacities of the resources we give ourselves. And as we go forward, we should translate some of the work that has been done by power into templates that we can use to move forward. Templates for recruitment, templates for assessment, and review as we go forward. So I'm inviting all of us the Kenya National Commission on Human Rights, the Kenya Human Rights Commission, Amnesty International, all of you are good colleagues. Let's sit at the table and get this job done. Let's walk away from the idea of talking at each other at press conferences. We have an equal stake in this country. This is our country. Let's all work together and deliver an improved and better uh, police environment so that we don't spend time you know, blaming the police all the time and criticizing the police and talking about the things they have not done, sometimes at the expense of the things they have done, the great things they have done. Look at where we are and where we were last October and the amount of work that these police officers have done throughout a very difficult period of time last year during the elections. We, I will not deny that we have our challenges, but I'll also be ready to admit that we've overcome those challenges as we go along. We are better today than we were yesterday, and we want to be better tomorrow than we are today. And with that hope and that focus and that commitment, let us all work together. Lastly, I want to assure members of civil society who are in this room. The focus of government 
is inclusivity, working together with all Kenyans from all walks of life. You've had our president articulately presenting the case for the Kenya National Project, that we want to be a nation. Everyone is welcome. And this is the time for us to drive the security sector in that kind of manner. So there is no conversation we will not have. There's no place we will not go. And there are no people we are not going to talk to in this country. As long as that conversation and those people and those organizations are also partners in moving our country to the next level. So I don't think in the history of this country it has been this good for us. We have a huge opportunity for us to move our country forward. So let us take full advantage of uh, that opportunity and do what we must do to improve uh, the policy. And when you meet a police officer, because it starts from there, when you meet a police officer as you drive around, please shake their hand and say hi to them and tell them thank you for what you're doing for our country. Uh, don't call them names. They are our brothers and sisters. They are our sons and daughters. They are our fathers and mothers. They are fellow Kenyans, sometimes who go beyond the mere call of duty to keep us safe and to keep our country secure. Some of them make sacrifices some of us cannot even begin to imagine. The number of police officers we have in Boni right now in Lam, some who have stayed there for quite a while. The number of police officers we have on the border at Mandera who are patrolling out there. The number of police officers we have in Capedo, in Trucana and the difficult areas where we have security challenges in the country, who are committed, who are out there. They go for days, weeks, and months sometimes without even seeing their families. They make sacrifices for us as citizens. And the least we can do is to appreciate them. As I said, let us also now begin a new culture where we are different people. When you meet a police officer, I say again, shake their hand, tell them thank you. And if there's an issue, because they are human beings and because they are from our society, they've not come from somewhere else, they're from our society. Some of their failings and their weaknesses are reflective of our collective failings and weaknesses. When we come across them, let us deal with them honestly and candidly. And I say again, Kawiri, as I said last time, we may hold different mandates, but we have equal responsibility for our country. And God has been so gracious to us as a people and given us a fantastic country. The least we can do is while we have an opportunity, let us make a contribution we can be proud of, like the one that these brothers and sisters have made at Ipoa. We salute you. We thank you. We wish you all the best as you move on. Although I frankly would like to give you this news, you are not going to move away from the security sector. We need you. And soon enough, <laughs> let me not announce here, but soon enough I'll find work for you <laughs> so that we can work together. We don't want to lose the brain trust that we have in you people as we move forward. Because one hallmark of a great country is knowing how you use your resources. And these are our national resources. We must find a way of continuously using them to improve ourselves as we go forward. I assure you of our commitment, of the government's support, and the government's determined focus to improve policing in this country. Our story is not even yet told, and it will be told in greater ways by the great people that we are going to have in our police sector. And the improvements that we keep making every day the great work that Mr. Kavludi has done and Joseph Boinetti in improving the curriculum of the police. Uh, I was hoping that Ipoa would say that by the time they are leaving office, the curriculum of the police is different from what it was when they came in. We are training the police differently. We are going to train them longer, courtesy of the wonderful work that has been done by IG with support of these good people and all of us contributing into it. I know civil society has made a great contribution to that curriculum, and I really appreciate that. And I want us to improve it even more. I thank our partners, lastly, for the support that we have received from them. I know the US government gives us huge support in the security sector and at the SGI program. We are going to do even more. I'm grateful to the British government for their continued support to our training and capacity building in the security sector. We continue to work with you. We assure you we'll be uh, accountable and we'll be partners worth your while as we move forward. 
May God bless us indeed for the good work ahead, and thank you. Na mniwezi wa masola ya ndani ya podaktari Fred Matiange kizungumza katika ile hafla ya kupokeza ripoti ya utendakazi ya mafiso osimamizi wa Aipoa katika hatamu ya uongozi wao wa miaka sita tangu mwaka wa elfu mbili na kumna mbili. Yela mbaya mejitokeza katika hotuba yake waziri Matiange ni kuwa uh, kuna nia kubwa katika idara ya polisi kuleta mabadiliko ila metuwa wito kwa wakereketu wa pamoja na wananchi kwa jumla uh, kuunga mkua kono yale mabadiliko na kufanya kazi pamoja uh, ili kurekebisha hali katika idara ya polisi kuliko kulaumiana lakini tukirejelea ile hotuba iliyotolewa na mwenyekiti wa Aipoa Mashari Anjero hapo awali kabla ya Dr. Fred Matiangi azungumze uh, alieleza kuwa tatizo kuu uh, lililo katika idara ya polisi ni kuhusiana na usimamizi uh, wa huduma za polisi uh, akitaja kuwa uh, idadi kubwa ya maafisa uh, wakuu ama makamanda katika uh, idara ya polisi hawana elimu kuhusiana na usimamizi ama management skills ukipenda uh, akiwa nataja kuwa uh, katika hatamu yao ya uongozi uh, kumekuwa na malalamishi kadha wa kadha yaliyotolewa zaidi ya asilimia 45 yakiwa yanahusu uh, yakiwa yanahusu uh, utumizi mbaya wa afisi asilimia nane ikiwa na husu uh, dhulma za polisi asilimia tatu nukta tatu kuhusu mawadi yaliyotekelezwa na polisi asilimia tatu nukta nane akiwa na husu uh, majeraha yaliyosababishwa na polisi nikirejelea tu hilo swala la uh, usimamizi wa idara ya polisi lililotajwa na mwenyekiti Mashari Anjero akiwa anasema kuwa uh, pia kuna tatizo la kutokuwa na mwelekeo thabiti uh, katika usimamizi wa polisi na pia uh, kutokuwa na uh, hatua uh, thabiti katika kuhakikisha kuwa maafisa wa polisi ambao wanapatikana na uh, tatizo lolote wanaweza kuadhibiwa ipasavyo lakini hata hivyo pia ameweza kumsifu uh, waziri wa masuala ya ndani Dr. Fred Matiangi kuhusiana na nia yake na pia ujio wake katika wizara hiyo kuwa ume, uh, umesababisha uh, ama umeleta afueni katika utendakazi wa idara ya polisi hapo unavuona eh, ni kuwa hiyo ripoti tayari imeweza kukabidhiwa kwa uh, waziri wa masuala ya ndani daktari Fred Matiangi ambaye pia uh, amesisitiza kuwa kwa wananchi pamoja na wakereketu waweze kuhakikisha kuwa uhusiano walionao uh, kati yao na polisi unaweza kuimarishwa ili utendakazi wa polisi uwe mzuri akiwa na toa wito kwa wananchi kuhakikisha kuwa pia wakikutana na polisi sio tu kuwaogopa ama kuwaona kama watu wabaya lakini waweze uh, kuwasalimia kuwajulia hali ili ule uhusiano uweze kuwa bora zaidi kuna mengi zaidi tunayofuatilia uh, pia katika bunge kuna kikao kilichokuwa kinaendelea uh, cha uh, kamati ya bunge kuhusu usimamizi wa fedha za umma ambao ilikuwa uh, kamati hiyo ilikuwa inakutana uh, na maafisa kutoka wizara ya uh, Wizara ya Utumishi wa Umma Vijana na Masuala ya Jinsia kuhusiana na sakata ya NYS uh, hivi sasa wameweza kukutana na wameweza kukutana na katibu uh, katika kitengo cha Uh, cha mipango uh, ambaye ni Julius Muya tutakuwa tunakueleza zaidi kuhusiana na yaliyojiri lakini kwa sasa napumzika kidogo tutarejea na mengi zaidi hivi punde kwenye leo mashinani usiondoke <tos>